Welcome to the Sunday Mass with Bishop David Ricken from St. Francis Xavier Cathedral in Green Bay. We are the church sent forth to bring hope, healing, mercy, and love to all God's people. Individuals and families continue to return to church every Sunday, yet there are those who for various reasons cannot be present in our parishes at this time. We are here for you. We invite you to pray with us from wherever you are. Welcome to St. Francis Xavier Cathedral for the celebration of the Holy Family. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, Graciously grant that we may imitate them, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life in the bonds of charity, so that in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children and when he prays, is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten. Firmly planted against the debt of your sins, 
a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if one has a grievance against another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these, put on love. That is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you are also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands, as is proper in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and avoid any bitterness toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, so they may not become discouraged. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with a dictate in the law of the Lord. 
Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen Christ the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, let your servant go in peace, according to your word. For my own eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light to reveal you to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in age, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Israel. When the time for the fulfillment of all the prescriptions had been fulfilled of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town in Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On this beautiful feast of the Holy Family, we see their portrait right here in our manger, the child Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. On this day, I would encourage you to Take your hearts and your families and put your heart to the heart of the Holy Family. If there's one person who's missing or one family who is missing in that portrait there, it's you and your family. You might say, oh, we're not perfect. We, we've, we've committed sins. We're not a perfect family by any means. We got a lot of issues. That's okay. Give yourself to the Holy Family They will strengthen you. They will give you encouragement. And they are always on your side. Strive to live as closely as you can and model your life after them. They are are so pure and holy that if we just open our hearts to the grace that they offer, we may see healing and grace and and even growth in our own families. Be thankful for your family. Be thankful for your spouse. For those of you who are married, thank the Lord each day for the gift of each other. Ask for forgiveness if you've sinned against the other. Ask for the grace to continue. But at the end of the day, remember the great blessing that you've been given. Those of you who are engaged to be married, do the same thing. Thank the Lord for the gift that is that being called into his service as a married couple give thanks to the Lord for each other and always cherish each other with respect. God willing, children are born in the marriages or sometimes we adopt children. Thank the Lord for the blessings. You know, look at the gospel values. Teach the faith. Oh yes, we may not be perfect and sometimes we may even, we may even travel off that path a little bit, but teach the children the faith as much as you're able to. Set the good example Help them to be raised in, strong, in, in, a, in a strong faith. That will give them grounding for their life. And always be thankful for your children. And never be too hard on them either. Remember their children. It takes time to grow. Children, be respectful to your parents, fathers and mothers. As I look at the gospel, I, I'm reminded of many pastoral visits I make. You off, we often go into rooms and you might see someone there like Simeon who is an elderly man who is recalling his life, ready to go to the Lord. And many times we just hear how grateful 
he is, what a good life he's lived. And, and it's always here how good of a life marriage he's had and how good life life he's had. And they always talk about their children and they're always proud. Very often, too, we have the same situation with the mothers. As a widow, they're often alone, praying, praying for their families, praying for their children. It's important that we remember that, that they are always very proud of their children as well, and, and their hearts are with them. If you have parents who are in assisted living or, or living alone, visit them. They are in very much in need of that because they love you all very much. And so this is honoring your, your father and mother as they approach their final days. Thank the Lord for the blessings. Thank the Lord for the gift of your life given to you by your parents. And I, I encourage you today to it, take your life and give it to the Holy Family to bless and wash over your life. And now we make our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us join our hearts and voices in prayer to our Father in heaven for the needs of every member of the human family. For the universal church, may the Holy Spirit continue to breathe courage and grace into the hearts of her leaders. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of peoples and nations, may the Holy Spirit strengthen them in wisdom and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, May family members support one another and help each other grow in wisdom, age, and grace and walk closer with God each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful of the Diocese of Green Bay, may the example of the Holy Family inspire us in lives of virtue and charity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's blessing on the new year, May God renew the gifts of the Spirit within us and inspire us with new ways to show God's love and compassion to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may God's love and mercy surround them and bring them to his everlasting kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your family gathered today. Through the intercession of the Holy Family, open our hearts to behold the great light of your enduring love. May this new year be a beginning for each of us and for the family of the, of, for, of the world to welcome your grace and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we become to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, O Lord, my iniquities and of my sins cleanse me. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him, the holy exchange that restores our life has shown forth today in splendor. When our frailty is assumed by your word, not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wonderful union, we too are made eternal. And so in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. indeed holy O Lord the font of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in reciting the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thanks for praying with us today. A special thanks goes to the Bergstrom Automotive family and to the Bishop's Appeal for supporting this broadcast. May God bless you. Remember, God loves you, the church loves you, and so do I.